frustrating loss. Seriously, what, what a frustrating loss. And not just because you lost off a putback game winner by Sabonis, but because this Heat team continues to be bad at the same things that they were very bad at for the last couple seasons. Number one, the third quarter. Today, the Heat got outscored by 20 in the third quarter. That has happened six times at home in their entire franchise history, and two of them have been this season, which is only two weeks old. It's unbelievable how bad they can be in the third quarter, especially when you got Eric Spolstra, supposedly the best coach in the NBA. That's what I was saying. I I'm still saying it. My mind hasn't changed on it. It just doesn't make any sense how they can come into that third quarter at home and get killed. Not lose by two or three, but get outscored by 20. Have a 13-point lead at halftime. Not only be blown away, but to go into the fourth quarter down seven. And another thing that continues to hurt the Heat is late game execution. Terrible shot selections. You got Jimmy Butler playing very lackadaisical in the first half like we're used to. Took zero shots in the first quarter. Once again, that, that seems to be the theme this year, but it's all good. Jimmy finished today with seven or 27 points, took 19 shots. He was aggressive to start the fourth quarter, attacking the basket, getting to the line, dropping his shoulder into people. You love to see it. But then every time you get into the last two minutes of the game, Jimmy says, screw all that. Let's put all the aggression out the door and let's start taking fadeaway shots. That's very tough that he has a very low percentage shooting. He did the one today. He, he made this one, which he takes the shot all the time. He shoots it like 10% made it today where there's like two minutes left in a one possession game. And he sits in the corner, does a little jab step, barely gets any space, then forces up a three. I hate that shot. And he does that stupid hero ball shot all the time. And today he hit it. But then just a couple possessions later, that was followed up with him taking a forced fadeaway from the mid-range shot after being locked up and picking up his dribble. Six seconds left on the shot clock. No reason he couldn't have kicked the ball back at the Tyler Hero who was standing right there. No reason he could have put it back at the top of the key and used those six seconds to work. No, he forced up a fadeaway long two. Why? I don't know. And the third thing that the Heat continue to be poor at is offensive rebounding. Because with the Heat up one in nine seconds to go on the shot clock, your exposure doesn't have Khalil Ware out there, the seven-foot athletic freak, which, okay, I get that's a lot to ask for. He's a rookie who's not a usual part of the rotation. But he doesn't have Haywood Highsmith out there. Someone who could play defense. No, you know who he has out there? Tyler Hero with Terry Rozier. Why the hell are those two guys out there for the game-winning defensive possession? Now, I understand game-winning shot wasn't necessarily their fault. I mean, you had Tyler Hero with a monster strip on DeMar DeRozan just to play before. DeMar went to go ISO to take the lead, and Tyler Hero had probably the greatest defensive play I've seen in his life. Shout out to him. But there's no reason those guys should have been on the court for that final possession. If you had someone who was maybe a little bit bigger, somebody, I don't know who, Kevin Love was out today, even though he was technically back from his personal reasons. Of course, we hope everything is okay there. But he was out today for conditioning. You didn't have Jaime Hawkins out there. But somebody else. I know Pella Larson was out there. That boy was playing pretty good today. I like to see that. But then again, I guess this Heat team just doesn't have a lot of great defenders. I mean, Josh Richardson got 20 minutes today. He stinks. All we hear about is Drew Smith's great defense. Maybe put him in the last possession. I don't care if he hasn't played all game. His legs could be warm, warm enough for one possession because Darren Fox actually did get a, a pretty clean look at a fadeaway for the win, just missed it. But then you had some bonus. He did push Bam in the back. I'm not going to lie, but that, that's not why the Heat lost this game. They lost the game because they can't rebound. That's nothing new. And, of course, the bonus puts it in. And then you still have 0.7 seconds left to run some sort of play. And it ends with a Terry Rozier 35-foot bomb that I don't even think hit the rim. What kind of offensive execution is that? Terry Rozier today, three for six. I I've never seen that man take so little shots in my life. He actually did hit a pretty big three late, uh, but obviously it, it don't matter. And then you have another problem today, which I didn't even mention yet, uh, which does seem to be relatively new, is the horrendous free throw shooting. They missed nine free throws today in a game that they lost by one. I think they were, what was the heat today from the free throw line? They finished today shooting 70% from the free throw line on 21 to 30 shooting. That's just not good enough, especially in the fourth quarter when you have Bam missing his attempts. Jimmy Butler missing both attempts in a possession. That is inexcusable. 
It's ridiculous, and it sucks that we continue to see the same problems from this team year in and year out, and the front office has done nothing to remedy that. Nothing. Have the same damn roster with the same damn problems, and it's very, very frustrating. Uh, anyways, we'll talk a little bit about today's game. So obviously coming into today, unfortunately, yeah, you did not have my guy, Kamehameha Jaquez Jr., returning from Mexico. Apparently, he got the bubble guts. I don't know if he was eating too much of that good home cooking food over there, and he was a little sick. But he did have to miss tonight's contest. But it was it was nice to get Kevin Love back, although he missed today's game for conditioning. I expect I, he'll likely play the next game. I know they start a road trip, so I assume he will travel. But then you also did get Duncan Robinson back tonight. Well, I was pretty happy with his performance. Obviously, he's off to a slow shooting start to the season. But it was nice to see him go three for three from beyond the arc. So those were a couple positives. You did have some more positives in the first half. Of course, Tyler Hero continues his monster play to start the season. Hero today finished with 27.6 rebounds and three assists. But what I love is the, is the efficiency, right? We know he could always score. It hasn't always been efficient. This year, that hasn't been the case because he's shooting very well this year. 50% today, uh, 9 to 18 overall, 5 of 11 from 3. Great, great shooting. And then, of course, Pella Larson with, again, some, some real rotation minutes. I think we saw him a little bit in the last game versus Washington. And he was awesome, like literally doing everything, which if y'all haven't heard me say my, my whole thing on Pella Larson, a.k.a. the Swedish Swish. Shout out to my boy Tobin for that nickname. But he is good at a little bit of everything. He's good at defense. He uses his positional size to guard one through three, even a couple of fours. He uses his vision to, to be a pretty decent playmaker. We saw him have a great lob to Bam today. That's the only easy basket Bam got today. For, yesterday, they looked for him, or last game against the Wizards, they looked for him. Has 30-plus points. Today, they don't, look, they don't look for him. He has a few. And Bam was fine today, 16 points for him. But he should get a lot more easy shots. I don't see any reason they can't run the pick and lob with Bam four or five times a game. Something to find him to get a couple layups or dunks. Because today was mostly mid-range shots and, and a couple of floaters. I wish they'd look for him more, like Pella Larson did today. But anyways, Pella Larson, of course, good at a little bit of everything, which really makes me high on his potential. Because if one day he can be great at a little bit of everything, well... That makes him a, a really great player in this league. You know, maybe a perennial, you know, starter in this league, you know, with a with borderline all-star potential. I don't know. But he was awesome today. He did finish with 13 points, two rebounds, two assists, three of five shooting from three. 12 of those 13 was in the first half, so he did get pretty hot. Uh, but everything was good in the first half. But if you were a Heat fan, no way you felt good because you were up 13 going into halftime. And, of course, there was another ceremony. We know how that goes, whether the Heat get their ass kicked in the third quarter on Pat Riley night or whether they lose on Udonis Haslam jersey retirement night to the Jante Murray game winner it never works out for the heat and today you had you did have Bam and Abayo's gold medal ceremony celebration so shout out to him it was a beautiful moment to see him and Mama Bam out there of course you love Mama Bam those two are super bowl adorable are super adorable together and I do feel great for Bam because he, he deserves it he had an awesome Olympics so it was cool to see him honor them but then you had the third quarter uh, and I do got this graphic right here. It shows the home games this season. It's abysmal. Negative 21 versus Orlando. Negative 12 versus Detroit. Uh, Detroit under 13 versus the Knicks. And negative 21 uh, ended up being negative 20 versus the Kings. This is inexcusable. And what I want to know is y'all thoughts down below. What do you think is the reason for the third quarter? I'm trying to understand it. I, I can't yet. I really need to sit down and do a deep dive because I feel like the Heat are trying to play the basketball the same way. It just looks a lot more sloppy. I feel like the other teams are making a lot more shots that they don't usually make, you know, or, or that they weren't making earlier in the game. I don't feel like the defense has been way worse. I can't really pinpoint exactly what the problem is, but it's too big of a trend to be coincidence at this point. So let me know y'all thoughts, of course, down below. But the Heat were down seven going into the fourth quarter. That's when we got aggressive Jimmy. They were able to eventually take the lead. Uh, and then DeMar DeRozan started cooking in that fourth quarter. Got to hit mid-range spot a few times. Hit a monster four-point play. How the hell you let up a four-point play that late in the game? That's also inexcusable. And obviously, it ended up being the difference uh, as the Heat would take some bad shots. The Kings would take some better shots. And DeMondis Sabonis would get the put back uh, with just 0.7 seconds left. And that was all that she wrote. Uh, so as far as the box score to see if there's anything else to talk about today, talked about Jimmy. I do like how he took 19 shots today and 11 free throws. So the aggression was nice. But I want to see more. I want to see him do it in the first quarter. I want to see the aggression late in the fourth quarter. If you want to be a max contract $50, $50 million per year player, 
I don't want to just see it for two quarters. I don't want to see it for three. I want to see it for all of them. But today was a nice step. I do believe it was Jimmy's most field goal attempts in the game this season. So numbers wise, it looks good. But he, I wish he'd pick his spots in the game a little bit better. Nikola Jovic didn't get too much run today. A little bit of a, a decrease for him. Only got four points. We talked about Bam. Hero was awesome once again. The biggest bright spot of this season so far, without a doubt. And then Terry was here. Didn't do too much today. But at least he wasn't his usual 20%, which is what he's been shooting. Because uh, he was also a turnstile on defense today. That, that trade, if you ask me right now how I feel about the Heat trade for Terry Rozier, uh, Jerry's still out. Because he has some games where he looks amazing. And I love the shifty, uh, shifty, nifty, scary Terry. I guess we're, we're, we're past Halloween, so now it's Mary Terry. Uh, I screamed Mary Terry Christmas when he hit that monster three. I thought he was cooking late. Uh, and I also thought his game winner was going in. Because that's the thing about Terry. No matter how bad he starts... He gives me the confidence he'll get hot at some point because he is that electric scorer. Uh, we just didn't really get it tonight. But I I'm iffy on how I rate that trade because he's like a love-hate type of guy, I think, with most Heat fans because he either looks extremely great when he's hot and pretty nasty when he's cold. Uh, but we talked about Pella Larson. Highsmith only got seven minutes tonight, which is surprising since you were missing Jame Jaquez. Uh, and then you got Alec Burks with only 12 minutes, which was surprising because Josh Richardson got 21. And he didn't look great at all. Uh, but then, of course, you had your usual uh, 12 minutes of Thomas Bryant. Uh, Kevin Love, please come back. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, but anyways, I think that's all I got to say for this game. Uh, heartbreaking loss, especially coming the day after the Dolphins lose on a game-winning field goal. Again, for the second game in a row for them. Uh, but at least we got Cam Ward. Hashtag the Heisman with a one. Hashtag Heisman campaign award. Make sure y'all watching the Miami Hurricanes if you're not already. Because it's not looking like the Dolphins will be with playoff hope still. Uh, and the Miami Heat looks like same old, same old. So if y'all looking for some, some good South Florida sports, the Florida Panthers, first and foremost, cannot forget the champs. But also Cam Ward and the Miami Hurricanes. Make sure y'all check them out. Anyways, the Miami Heat do start a West Coast road trip that begins Wednesday versus the Phoenix Suns. And then they have a gauntlet coming up after that. I believe they next play on Friday versus, let me pull up the actual schedule here. Uh, so they play on the Phoenix. They play the Phoenix Suns on Wednesday, and then they have the Denver Nuggets, and then at Minnesota, and then that kind of ends their three-game gauntlet. Uh, and then they play Detroit, which for the Heat is no gimme either, I guess. But uh, this is a tough one. Uh, wish it would have got the win, but we'll see what happens next time. Make sure y'all like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next post game. Peace out, everyone. Pull up in the city, trying to get that dead fast. Like, do it on my own, I don't need no dead weight. Like, had to kill them off, yeah, I need a headspace. You know this homegrown bitch don't offend me. Hmm.